guys it's been a little while and I have so much stuff I want to talk to you about primarily today we're going to be doing a video about mini assemblage some of you might say we did that already like lots of times and you would be right but I have a little project that's a little bit different and now I'm hearing from a lot of people that they just can't get enough of mini assemblage and they're just starting out and they'd like to see a new video with a new idea so they're gonna get it tonight <laughs> and also I wanted to kind of follow up with you a little bit and finish up on the gold paint over the pewter the Bisu by 1928 pewter we did last time last time I finished a couple of projects and I wanted to show you the finished items so there's just a whole bunch of little things we're going to talk about. Hopefully it holds your interest. If not, come back another day when I have something you like. <laughs> I'm going to do my best. So I appreciate you tuning in. And let's get to it. Come on over here and I'll show you what I got. Okay, guys. So just real quick, I wanted to show you what became of all those gold painted pieces that I did the last video we did the Lumiere paints we did the vintage antique golds and we also did the testers gold paint pen and we compared them and showed all three how they were and if you didn't see that video just go back to the one previous to this it's it's all right there but I remember I left some unfinished business there and I'm just going to tell you real quick um, to seal that stuff you do need to seal it you do definitely need to seal it over the pewter um, you can put it on with a sponge except the tester's paint pen. It just comes right out of the pen, so you have a lot of control with that. Let it all dry really well, especially the tester's paint pen. And then when it's really bone dry, you can go give it two light misting coats of Krylon clear matte sealant, matte lacquer. If you want a little bit of a sheen to it, you can go with satin. I would not do gloss. You can try it if you want, but I would not do it. I think it, I don't know, it's just, it just looks a little bit better if it's a more muted finish on there. And of course with the matte, it's the same as nothing. It won't look like anything had happened to it, but you'll know that the piece is sealed and you do need to do that to have a good professional finish. Here are two pieces that I made. I don't know what I'm going to do with them yet. I'm, I have a place on my website now where I can sell some of my own jewelry because it's kind of accumulating around here from all the videos. I have a bunch of stuff. It's not really a line. You can all tell it's Bisou though. And that's the thing. But um, this piece I did with the gold plated. I have the little sections little flowers. All these pieces are in stock on the website. We have them in the raw pewter for you to colorize your way. We also have them in gingerbread, old silver, and uh, rusted iron. So those are three distinctly different finishes. And this one I did with, I think this one's the Lumiere. I think they both are, come to think about it. So if you like the color of that gold, this is that would be what you'd use is the Lumiere gold from the Exciter kits. And also you can get it by a little pot if you want to use a lot of it, but you're going to have to go, I'm sorry, the big box store to get it because I don't carry the big pots. I just have the Exciter kits. So anyway, um, I did have them one time and nobody bought them. So it's like, you know, I'm, okay, we'll do the Exciters. Anyway. So I use some of the snail shell pearls that I have sometimes. Um, they're the check ones are so wonderful. They have such a luster to them. And then I use some of the bisque roses and a little Limoges Lady cameo there. And I also filled some of my cracks, which is a good thing to do with a more finessed assemblage. You want to finish up by filling in your cracks. And then there's a little heart and so forth. But just to see what I use, it's the same mount. There's the back. And what I did is I cut off, there's like a bail on this. And I cut it off. Well, you can see it on here because I did it upside down. I don't know if I need to turn that or not, Javi, huh? 
don't need to turn it. She says don't turn it. Okay, so this one, um, I left the bail on. This one I took it off from here, and then I hung through the bottoms and the sides. On this one, I hung through the sides, and then at the bottom, I put a little ornament. All these pieces we have in stock at the site. And when you apply this stuff by hand, wipe on, wipe off, um, it is so beautiful because it, it gives it a little bit of a worn look. And that's what we artists like. We like something that has a bit of a vintage used worn patina or color to it. A shabby color if you want to call it that. So that's this is what it will give you. But you must seal it or it will get a little bit too shabby and you won't want that. Um, just to tell you what I've used, this is Mexican Crazy Lace Agate which is one of my most favorite semi-precious stones ever. We do have them at the site. I try not to be on them. This is the 40 by 30 size. And also on these mounts, you may recall that when we first had Bisuba 1928, we had some problems with fit on them, and some of the big um, pieces, especially like this, didn't fit very good. You had to really monkey with them to try and get them fit. Well, Mr. Bernie was very kind, and he went back to the drawing board, and he made them perfect now. So we've taken all the old ones out. All of our stock now is new, and it fits like a charm. So, And this this is vintage. I don't have any more. This is a Czech Baroque. I don't know if you could colorize them yourself that way. Boy, if I could find this, I'd be buying tons of it. That is gorgeous. But this is all I had, so it went on this one. So anyway, I just thought I'd finish up by showing you that. So now I'll take them out of the way. And again, if you want a review on how those things were made, those uh, the different colors were made, the different golds on the pewter, because I don't carry gold, it's expensive to have commercially plated gold. Um, you'll see how to do it. And it is it holds up very nicely and it's quite beautiful. Nice artisan finish, nice alternative. And it, it doesn't I know Mr. Bernie was saying, well, you know, that that would take a long time to put on. This doesn't take that much longer than their pewter treatment they do. It's, it's They do a lot of things over there by hand. They started out as a completely handmade business. Just like I did, you did, and everybody else. So, just something to think about. And speaking of which, i got one more thing I want to show you before I go to today's project. And this is so cool. You guys have seen the tri-hold or, or window bead that we carry in the B Super 1928. Well, this one is new. It is the 25 by 18 size. The one we had before was 18 by 13. So this is big. It's got a design here. Can you pick that up, mm -hmm. Tommy? It's a beautiful design. The other ones, it's, it doesn't have as much. It doesn't have as much space to make a design. But uh, there's a beautiful Victorian design here, and on the other side, and. I cut the thinking for those of you who like to do miniatures this would be an awesome piece you could make like a fairy garden in there or you could find miniatures like of a carousel horse or something and even make it twirl in there somehow maybe I don't know just an idea you could fill it up with beads too let's just show you the difference here this necklace that I'm wearing okay I love this I wear this a lot it was based or modeled on a necklace that I made for Mel's wife, but this is mine. And it's got the tri-hole bead in it, but this is a smaller one, so you can see how much bigger it is. Okay, We do have some in raw pewter at the site, not a lot, maybe 9 or 10. So if you want to try it, you're getting ideas, they're at bsuboutiques.com under um, Bisu by 1928 in the raw pewter. This one I put jump rings in. Isn't that funny? And this is a little sorority key. I just put the magnifying lens in it. And then I did, oh, I don't have to turn it. She said I don't have to turn it. I can't get used to that. I did a double bezel and put in the big um, lenses so that I could put stuff inside. And this is all watch parts in this one. And we have this bale too. And we do have these mounts. So, And we have this chain. We don't have this one, but we have this chain, the Figaro. So now I'll put this back on and let's get to today's project, which is mini assemblage and quite different from these things. Well, 
this one, this one's maybe a sandwich, but that's probably just a sandwich. Oh well, see you on track right now. All right, let me show you what I did for today. This is mini assemblage, but it's just kind of organic. It's definitely Bisu style. Bisu colors. Um, tend to go with off-white, shabby white, and pearls, and little stones, and hearts, and blah, 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 blah. And I always have. Kind of have to fight myself to get away from it. But anyway, um, basically what I have used is I have used this finding which we carry at the website in about every color we've got. Plus the raw ones came back in stock. So they should be back on the site till the video comes out. And then I used this little twig finding here. You can see what it looks like. Twig finding. And we have those in raw also as well as brass ox. But I'm going to use this to show you what not to do in a minute. Because you know how I love to show you what not to do. Okay, it'll, it'll help you out. It'll help you out and improve you all at the same time. That's what my grandpappy used to say. Okay, so anyway, what we're going to do is we're going to take the little branch and we're going to hang our substrate or our plaque to it. I already to save some time. I put that in there. And then I have some of Javi's briolettes. Javi has a wonderful video that she's made. And it's going to be on the Be Boutique's channel really, really soon. Um, she did these realettes for me. And wrapped them. She has a new way of doing it that makes it so easy peasy you will not believe it. And these realettes I think we have on the site too. I think Shelly just put them on this afternoon. Um, but this is a Miriam Haskell Pearl. I don't have any of these to sell you. But these are out of my own stash. And she wrapped this too. And I've done this myself. In fact, I've even done it in a video. But this is so cool. She came around in a little spiral here. And then look at this. How perfect that is. And she's fast too, let me tell you. So she's going to have videos up for you on doing more of this stuff. Because she's, she's the wire girl around here. So we're going to put that on here too. And then we're going to decorate it. But first, you've got to do a bunch of hole punching. And I did not use the drill press for this. I used my hole punch, my handy beadsmith hole punch with the 1 8 bit, if you want to call it. I don't know. We have them at the website. We only have them in this size because I feel it's the best size. And so and it's, it's big enough almost to take the rivet, you know. For this like, one rivet. Anyway, and you know I have a video on how to use the hole punch properly with your center punch. It's very, very hard to get through metal like this if you haven't center punched it first. You have to ding it to mark it, or you'll skid and you'll be all over the place. You'll wreck a lot of your stampings. It's just not worth it, and you don't have to. So please go back and find the whole bunch video, and I will show you exactly how to use it in that video. So I pre-punched these. And I'm going to tell you a few little foibles that you can get into when you do these parts. Okay, first of all, I've spray painted them. Ivory white. A fine coat, just like shh, misting over, shh, like that. When I've got the can in my hand, just shh, like that. So you have highs and lows. And you can see that. I've got more paint down here than I do up there. That's fine. You don't want heavy coats of spray paint on brass. It takes too long to dry. It stays gummy. Blah, 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 blah. Actually, there's even a little bit too much on me. Okay, so then what I did is after it was dry, and you do both sides, by the way. This one's done on the back also. i got to clean that up a little bit. But anyway, you do both sides. And then, if you like, you can distress it. I prefer to distress it. So I take my very fine quadruple aught steel wool and I go over it and I raise some gold highlights. So then of course when you do that you're going to have to reseal it because you've exposed the brass again. So you know that might take a little time to do that to get all the parts set up for you so that you can make your assemblage. Sorry guys if I'm going too slow for some of you but I like to tell everybody everything they need to know and not leave half the information out which happens a lot of times on other videos. So, there you go. 
So there's all the information. Now, what I wanted to tell you about when you when you hole punch this piece, there's it's, it's got a sweet spot that you've got to hit. And if you don't, this piece is not going to hang straight. Now, I erred when I did that. And this hole right here, I punched too high. So when I hang this here, one's going to be longer than the other. And then I'm going to have to jerry-rig it to make it fit up right. You don't want to do that. It'll look funny. So what you have to do is you have to get this hole in the right place. So this one's in the right place. You get it right in the center of the branch, right under this top branch going across. And then on this other one, get that out because you'll see it wrong. I got it in the right place. It's right underneath this little piece sticking up here. Right underneath it. But more toward the bottom of the branch. And if you poke it there, you're going to be fine. So let's go ahead and set this up. And let's do our mini assemblage. Because this really won't take long from here. We've, once you do all your preliminaries and you set it up, it, it goes pretty quick. So I've got a little gold uh, jumpy, and of course I'm going to use my jumpy tool. Nothing, uh, nobody is uh, faking it to use a jumpy tool, let me tell you. In 1928, they have a machine that does all these attachments. Whack, 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 whack. But back in the beginning, you had to do just like us. Attach them all by hand. Okay. So I've got that on. I've got Javi's Pearl on. Now I'm going to put my top pieces. Now, because of the way these are hanging, I might have to rig it a little bit to get it to hang right. We'll see. Okay, this one is probably not going to be big. No, here's one. It's going to get about a six millimeter. Six or even a seven if you can get them. We only carry four, six, and seven. Then we have some ovals that are new. They're small. I'd like to get some big ones someday. So now I'm going to take it on there and I'm going to hook it and see if it twists it funny. Because you have to have all your hanging loops going the right way. These jumps I may remove and replace later. They're a little bit reddish. You'll have that sometimes. Yeah, I think it's going to be okay. Alright, I'll go ahead and hook it. Okay, where are you? There we go. All right. Sorry for my handshake, guys. I don't have the palsy. My hands have always shook, in case you never noticed. I better talk louder. People are going to be complaining. You don't talk loud enough. I don't sometimes. It's true. I don't. All right. So now, okay, oh, wow, we did a good job on that one. Mm-hmm. Pretty, huh? Real pretty. But one dilemma, you might think, I'm going to hang that from this here, and I'm going to put my chain on it. Yeah, you are. But you're not going to just put a simple bail on there with the jump and think it's going to hang straight because it's going to rock all over the place. So you're going to have to compensate for that. And the way that I have done that is by using a filigree. And I found this one works really well. This is our new classic gold finish. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to need some bigger jump rings. I've got a couple here. These are eights, I think. Oh, there's six is my work, but it looks like I don't have any more down here, so. Okay, here's what I'm going to do. This is all preliminary stuff. We're going to be setting this up. And then we have the fun, the collaging. So I'm going to go through this one. I'll pause a minute and show you a little better once I get this one. See, our jump snapped. Did you hear that? It means it's closed. Okay, yeah, those are a little bigger than I would have liked. Huh. Do I have any sixes down here? It doesn't look like it. Hmm. Oh well, we're going to have to make two. Six millimeters would be better. These are eights. Okay, so now I'm going to go through this right past this little knob here. 
So I'm going to go there. And then I'm going to come over. I'm going to skip one hole. And I'm going to come over to this one. So I have one that doesn't have anything in it. And then I'm going to click. Hear that? People love our jumps. Okay, now, because I used eights, I'm going to still have some loosey-goosey. But I'm going to go ahead and finish it for today so you can see. Yeah, then it'll look good. There, see? You know what? This is good I do this. It's good when I mess up because this way I can show you what not to do and why. Okay, when you use the eights as compared to this one, which are sixes, this makes the piece closer to the branch. And you want that because now it's not going to, it's, it's tight. It's not going to loosey-goosey moving all around the place on there. It's not going to do that. With this one, you got too much play. So there really should be sixes. And then it will make it nice and snug. But I'm going to leave them in there for now because we got to finish this. I'm sure you guys have things to do. You want to go make the jewelry, right? So i got to finish up. All right, so now on top, what I do is I go through here, the top little opening, and then I have a nice little bale that's got two holes. This is from Classic Gold at Bisu Boutiques. It's a new line for us. And I'm going to close it now. These are not my standard jumps, so they don't click. Ha <laughs> ha, there's a difference. All right, so now I've got my bale on there. And it does hang the right way, by the way. I just can't see it. All right, so then, you know, all you got to do then after that is uh, thread whatever chain you're going to use through it. And you're going to have to use something that's not real big. These are, I think, 4 millimeter pearl chain. And I do believe we have some at the website. If we're out, we will be replacing it. So, okay, okay so now we have the fun. Now we're going to put all the doodads on. So, I'm going to start out. I got my E6000 and I got a nice little chippy. This is spray painted too. Um, brass rose, this double layer rivet comes that way. A little bit of blue on the bottom and put that down in the corner like so. Then I got a couple of these little guys, they're the smaller ones. And I'm going to put him, whoops, that won't matter, we'll be covering that. If I had my needle nose, while I have this, I can see if I can get You know, sometimes you do stuff and you get these glue strings, but you don't really see them until you take a picture. And then, oh baby, a picture, when you, when you take a camera picture, I advise everybody, before you take stuff out to a show to sell it or... Well, you'd be taking pictures if you're putting it on Etsy, but, you know, before you do anything with it, you know, check it by taking a quick picture. Just use your phone. You can do it right down your workbench where you're working. Use your phone and check it out, and you will see where you have screwed up. Because the phone does, uh, the camera does not lie. Okay, so I got those, those in there, and they're, they're spray painted. Then I have this beautiful vintage heart. Which we don't have on the site, but look at this. I got a whole bag of them. I probably should take this up and put them on the site, right? I think I can get more. I gotta check. But anyway, that's what I use. So I'm put a little bit and then I slide it down into place. That's what I do when I glue. Slide it down into place. I'm a pretty neat gluer. I've done this for a long time. But I still have to, some days it's just not as fabulous as other days doing this. Okay, now to keep balance and also so that I don't have a lot of cracks because I didn't do fill on this one. I, I didn't do it. So um, I'm going to put a cabochon pearl here, flat back. Right in here. All right. And then right next to it, I'm going to put another one. And this one's going to be used kind of like a shim. I use lots of these little cabs. And, oh, see, now it wants to tip the other way. Now it's going to put it on my heart. And I'm going to have clamps. See? 
Well, like I say, sometimes it's a good thing to do things wrong because then I can show you what to do if they go wrong because they do. And when you're learning, you need to know. So I'm just going to, I'm going to take my uh, toothpick here and kind of throw it around. And when, when this sets up, you'll probably just be able to roll that right off there. If not, get um, some goo gone on a swab and it'll come right off. Gugon is great for loosening up E6000 and, and moving it out of where you don't want it to be. Really good. Let's see, I've got some on the tip of that, so I don't want to. You have to be careful doing this so that you don't uh, scratch. You don't want to scratch the finish. Okay, that's good enough for now. I'll, I'll clean up later. I just got done telling you how neat I am, right? Did I lie? No, I didn't. I am neat. But this will happen. You will have it. I am very neat. There's many a piece I do. I never have any cleanup. But that's because I've been doing this a long time. Okay, now I got one of these little curl curve leaves. We have a lot of them on the site. We have them in raw brass. We have them in classic gold. I think we have them in matte black. Um, rose gold. The, the old rose uh, ox. We have them. I like to bend it a little bit. One of the best things about brass is you can manipulate it. You can manipulate pewter too though. Any soft metal, you can manipulate it and that's a good thing. Okay, so now I'm going to lay this in here like that. Like a little feather in its cap. Yep. Alright, here we go. So I'm going to the bottom of that. And then I'm going to try to very gently slide this in here so I don't have glue blurb everywhere. I think I've got enough to hold that, but I will need to check that later to make sure after it's, you know, cured real nice that I haven't uh, failed to get enough. Okay, I have a little bag of buttons in here, and of course now it's gone. Probably brought them out to use them, I can't see it. Oh well, I'll have to use one of these for what it's worth. I would have liked to have a nicer looking button, but... Now you wait until I'm done with this video, I'm going to find... Oh, here it is, I told you. I'm going to find it's right in front of my face! And it was. Okay, I see one that's really perfect. Let's see if I can get it out. Yeah, that's perfect. I love using old shell buttons. They're still not real valuable, although they cost more than they used to when you buy them. Um, but they, oh man, I hate that. I hate getting E on the work surface. That'll come off tomorrow. I told Javi, this is, I'm going to do something tomorrow I haven't done for a long time. I'm going to come down here and clean this workshop up. Not that it's that filthy. I just got stuff thrown around, you know. It happens. You've done a bunch of projects and you get stuff thrown around. So I put my little pearl there. My little pearl button there. If you're, you know, junking around flea markets and stuff and you find a bag of these, a very good idea to pick them up. Because you will find so many uses. You know, they actually make really good connectors. I'll put a little sparkler right here. I have that uh, pick-me-up tool. We have them on the website, too. People love those. I will be honest. I have not spent a lot of time with it yet. I know there's a girl who has done a really nice YouTube on it. If you want to go looking for it. I don't remember her name. Okay, now you're going to see me set these by hand real clumsy like. I think I've told you before, in the factory at 1928, the ladies have a method of doing this. It's so fast, it's incredible. And they use a pickup tool of some kind too. I think actually it's some kind of a thing up to a machine that has like suction or something and it picks the thing up. But much better ways to set stones than this. But it worked, so it's all good. All right, did we get everything on there? I think we did. Oh, no. No, 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 no. No, I'm missing something. 
This one I used a little glazed um, rose, but I don't have another one just like it, so I'm going to have to use something else. So I have this bigger one. Let's see what that looks like. Well, that's quite lovely. What do you guys think? I think that works. Let me pull this closer to me. I like it. Now, when you put this rose on the filigree, you know, you don't have anything on the back to catch glue. So, it's a trick. It's a little bit of a trick to get enough glue on the back of the rose, but not too much. Because you don't want a lot of it clerping through, but you also don't want the rose to fall off. Okay. It won't. I'll hold it in place for a sec. It won't. What I really need to do is I, I need really to buy some little itty bitty blanks about maybe this size that are, you know, stamped brass solid that I could put on the back of something like that because I find if you uh, take something like say this and you want to glue to it, you know, if you put something in the back of it, now that should be solid but just to show you, give you an idea, um, it helps, it helps a lot. To catch any glue gloves, you won't see it. I'm all for being neat. I love neat work. I don't like stuff that's askew and, and it's not. I'm not. I think tomorrow when I come down here, I will probably set some little tiny pearls in there. I think I'll wait till, till it sets up because um, then I won't move this stuff around by doing it. I'll come down with my little pliers and do it. Maybe I'll bring my pick-me-up tool and teach myself to finally get that right. And maybe get some little itty-bitty pearls in there. Maybe a few in there. Maybe just a few here. A few here. I just, I like fill. When I do mini assemblage, I really like fill. That's something I noticed years ago um, when I, I was already doing assemblage, but I always admired Wendy Gill. I know I've told you that lots of times. And I noticed how she... We take the little caviar beads, some of us call them Balantini, um, the little itty bitty micro beads, for lack of a better word, yeah, micro beads. I sometimes have them at the site. And she would spread a little bit of glue around in the cracks and she would fill the cracks and it just looks so much more finished. So, you know, you might want to try that. So anyway, so all I have to do basically is let this set up, determine tomorrow if I would like to do so a little bit of fill and then find myself the right chain to go with this and voila these are virtually the same but not quite I used a little bit um, different bigger rows here I, I'm going to have different chain than this and then we had the uh, white opal and the uh, pink violette glass well, now we have Mary Haskell pearl on this one that's the difference but they're virtually the same thing and all the parts that you need to make this are at the bsuboutiques.com website okay and the only thing you're not going to find there is this heart and I want to see what I can do about getting it on before too long it depends I'm gonna have to go back and look and see if I'm able to buy more if I'm not able to buy more I may hold back on them because that is a very special part to me let me tell you a little bit about it since we're finished up here this piece I used a lot when I had my line back in the 90s. It was in a lot of my little brooches. We had a brooch, the style number was PN38, and the goal was to be able to make it in 15 minutes without making a mess. So you'd have a lot of cleanup. And most of them had this piece in it. Well, you used, I used to get them in a craft store, being honest with you. You used to be able to buy big bags of them, even bigger bags than this one. Big ones. But... Somewhere down the road, someone in their infinite wisdom decided that wasn't a very popular part anymore, and they stopped making it. So, I couldn't get it. So one day I found a, a bag of them, and I'm like, oh, wow, my parts, you know, wow. So I'd love to share them with you, but i got to check and see first if I can get more. Maybe I'll share up to you. I like to share. As for these, I'm done sharing on those. <laughs> <laughs> I shared a lot of these. We had them on the site for a long time, but I'm done sharing them. No more Haskell pearls this year. Okay, 
They say it's a Haskell Pearl. I don't know. It looks kind of sort of like it. Might not be. I don't know. It's not Japanese. I do know that. It's Czech. Okay. Enough yakking on. Get your parts. We'll see. I'll go up and I'll see if I can find you some part numbers and have you will put them on the, the video when she renders it so that you can find them. And it's all good. You guys, thanks a lot for tuning in. I missed you. I wish I could be here every week. We'll see if we can't make that happen. Javi and I were talking about some ideas for that today. I mean, she may do some of the videos part of the time, which is, is good because she can show things from a different perspective. So anyway, you guys have a wonderful day. Go off and try this. It's really cool. It kind of has a little bit of an oriental look to it, organic look. I don't know. I like it with the branch. So have a wonderful day, and I'll catch you next time. Bye.